Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Nina Ribena's Art Journal Prompts and More. It's the final week of the Puzzled Prompt and of course it's um, a wild card this week, meaning that you can um, use puzzles in any way you like. You can alter something, you can um, use Lego pieces for instance to create um, a background and then make a tag or an artist trading card, entirely up to you. Um, now you've probably gathered that I am choosing to do some altered Jenga. Um, these are the small pieces here I think they come in a few different sizes I think you can get giant ones for in the garden but what I want to do is paint um, the sides and the front um, or the back whichever way you want to call it and I'm just going to use some cream craft paint to do to do this um, because it's wood I'm working with which is um, slightly um, which it well not slightly it is porous um, I'm going to use the linen as an undercoat before I go on with my main colour which I think is either going to be pink or blue I haven't decided yet so I'll do all three pieces um, and as soon as I've done that, I'll be back. Now my Jenga pieces are dry and I've speeded the process up by using my heat tool. Now that has just acted as an undercoat because what I want to do now is paint each of these. You can see that I've done a fourth. I want to paint each of these a different colour. So I've got a turquoise, orange, lime, green and pink. And I'm using chalk paint for two reasons. Um, firstly, because this um, is good for covering furniture and secondly, because it dries really quickly. So I'm just, let's choose the bright pink. I'm just going to put a little tiny bit there and I just want to go all the way around the edges again. I'll do the edges first and then the large size. And because I've undercoated um, my piece first, this will probably only need one coat of this paint. And so I'm just going to go all the way around the edges of all of my pieces. And as soon as I've done that, I shall be back. So my Jenga pieces have all been coated in paint and it's taken two layers um, of paint with all of these. But what I want to do before I do anything else is just coat them in some Mod Podge just to seal that paint. And again, Mod Podge will dry really, really quickly as well. So I'm just going to go um, around all the edges first like this just a thin coat you don't need too much and just make sure that you know you just blend it around the edges and you find that you haven't got any ridges of glue and I'm working on deli paper as well so that um, the glue doesn't doesn't stick and then I'm going to do the top last and I'll do this with all of the other three pieces my Jenga pieces are sealed now and that's all, all dry so they're ready for me to start working on and I want to apply a focal image on this side here, hence all the preparation. Now you will obviously need some kind of very small image for a size like this and so what I've done is I've drawn myself or cut myself a window and the way that I did that I drew around my piece of Jenga, you can see where I've done that, poked a hole in the middle and then I've just drawn some lines diagonally and then all you need to do then is just fold it back like this you don't even need to cut it just just fold it like this really quick really simple um, but it gives you a nice window then if you just press that down I mean you can obviously take more time I've rushed that one and um, it's not quite right there we go we'll use this one here and it gives you the opportunity then to grab um, various papers and just see where you want to place um, your focal image so you want papers with a small pattern now I've got this roll here let me just move that out of the way but Almut um, sent me in happy mail for the embellishment challenge She's got a video showing you how she does this and this is what I want to use for a couple of them and I just think, in fact, where do I want it to, to go? Um, I want one, something like that and I think I want to use this one here and incorporate some of the green and so I then know where I need to position my Jenga so for instance I think that one if you put them like that as well you can see sort of you know what colour you want to incorporate for your backgrounds and so I know that I want that part there over my Jenga piece and so I think the easiest thing to do is just to trim a small piece off and work on that let me just grab 
grab some the scissors. The green and the pink. I've chosen these two pieces here from that roll and I'm not sure whether I want it to go like that, that way round or like, like that. Um, oh crikey, decisions, decisions. I think I like it that way. Like that. Right, okay, decision made. Bring back the Mod Podge. So what I am going to do is apply some Mod Podge onto my Jenga piece, making sure that I've got plenty around the edges again because, you know, we want to make sure that this is going to stick nice and firmly. And I think what I'll do is I'll apply, I'll apply some to the back as well, just to make sure. In fact, where's my deli paper? Bring back my deli paper so that I don't end up with it sticking where I don't want it. There we go. So I know that I want it something like, like that. There we go. So I need to press really firmly down now and just really press down on those those edges and then give this a quick zap with the heat gun and then I shall trim around the edges and get rid of all of the bits that um, that I don't need. Then I'm just going to trim around the edges, getting as close as I can. And then I shall use my emery board then just to get rid of the extra bits that are sli uh, slightly hanging over the edges. That one there and that one's been sanded down and I just need to decide what I want to use to ink around the edges. Um, and I know that this one here, I want to incorporate some of the green. And so I'm going to glue that down something like, like that. So again, we'll apply some glue. There we are. And I think this time I'm just going to apply it to the Jenga piece. And I want that to go something like that. So let's turn it, turn it over. Just make sure that um, I'm covering all the, all the edges. Just slide that down ever so slightly. There we are and really press that down nice and firmly again, sort of really pressing in around the edges. And the easiest way to dry it is to hold it down firmly and just dry around the edges. And as soon as your glue's dry, you're ready to um, trim. first two look like really really cute and I've just gone around the edge with a sharpie marker um, just to frame them and tidy up the edges so time to work on the next two let me just put those off to one side now I want to work with some of the art by Marlene collage paper um, but the collage papers the patterns are actually quite large but she's got all these um, small squares on the front of both of the pads. So that's the one. And where's the other pad gone? Let me just um, bring the other pad as well. And that's the other pad. And so I photocopied it. Um, and so that's what I've got here. And I want to use some of these gorgeous pretty pretties. I think I want to use this one here with the turquoise. Um, and again, if I just play around, I think it's that area there that I want to use mind you I do quite like that as well oh decision so I'm going to play around with this and um, then I shall glue my papers on my pretty papers are glued down and as you can see I've ended up doing a couple more as well just because I didn't want to waste those slithers of paper now let me just take one of them let's do this one here what I want to do is take a pokey tool and I am just going to eyeball the center point which is about there and I'm just going to press down really hard to make a hole and I'll do the same in the bottom as well and I'm twisting it around because I want it to go down um, quite a quite a way there we go so we've got a hole there and I'm going to do exactly the same on this side here as well I think that 
is the center maybe a bit further over so let me just do this off camera so that I can stand up and find the center and then I've got a couple of picture framing hooks and I'm just going to screw these into the top and the bottom they screw in really really easily all the way to the bottom of the screw and I'll do exactly the same now with the top and then I can embellish these and then I've got a little tassel here that coordinates with um, the picture front and I've got a jump ring and I'm just going to open the jump ring and you can see I'm doing that sideways not pulling the jump ring out and so I'm going to attach my little tassel and then close that back up. I need another pair of pliers. These are quite strong jump rings and just close that back up. There we go. Oh, these are my finished little charms. I just love these and I've taken this part off because to me it just didn't look right. Now you could either call these done. I would coat the images with just a little bit of Mod Podge again or you can take it one step further and you can put some dimensional glue over the top. So let me just show you how to do that because I know there um, were a couple of comments in the group um, of people not knowing how to apply this dimensional glue to get a, a good finish. So let me just go and grab a pin because um, my nozzle is sealed. Right, that's that sorted. Now you can use any type of dimensional glue. Um, I'm going to be using the Judikins Diamond Glaze. You could use Mod Podge or you could use the, whoops a daisy, the DecoArt um, Media Liquid Glass. I find this one harder to squeeze out of the tube. So I'm going to use the Diamond Glaze. And what you will do, oh, get rid of any air bubbles, squeeze it onto a piece of cardstock to get rid of any air bubbles to start off with before applying it to your piece. And then you literally start off in one end. You see, I've got an air bubble there. Um, just get rid of the air bubbles first. And then you want to start at one end and this self levels. So just take it in sort of like a zigzag pattern I find easiest. Going backwards and forwards, making sure that you're covering all of your patterned paper. And as I say, it self levels, take it right to the edge, it won't um, fall off the end in a nice, steady, steady manner. And I'm just going to keep going all the way to the bottom. And then I'll do it with all of them and then I'm just going to have to be patient and set them aside. Somewhere flat, I've got um, a shoebox lid that I'm going to put mine in um, with a piece of deli paper on the bottom just in, just in case. And I shall stick them on top of a shelf to make sure that Louis doesn't come and sit on them. My Jenga tiles have been drying overnight and so the glue has set nice and hard and clear. Just look how shiny that is. I just love the effect once it's dry. And I just kept them in the lid of a shoebox as well on top of a shelf so that they were out of harm's reach. Um, I just love these. I mean, great for hanging off the edge of an art journal, hanging on a handbag. They make great gifts to give away in Happy Mail as well. So, you know, these are a lot of fun. I just absolutely love the ones with these papers that Almet sent me as well. Um, I think I mentioned earlier that um, Almet has got a video sharing how she makes her till rolls, and I will leave a link to that in the description box below. It's something that I've wanted to try and just haven't got um, around to. But I look forward to seeing how everybody else decides to interpret the prompt this week as I've said it's a wild card so you can do anything you like I mean Scrabble tiles was something that I wanted to try but just completely ran out of time to do so lots and lots of ideas and if you wanted to go back and repeat um, a challenge from earlier on in the month then of course you can do so yeah I look forward to seeing all your wonderful ideas in the Facebook group if you enjoyed this week's video I'd really appreciate a thumbs up do let me know what you think in the comments below um, um, and if you're not subscribed to my channel, I'd really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button. And don't forget to press the bell as well so that you get notifications of my future videos. And take care, everyone. I'll see you all again soon. I'll be back next week with a brand new challenge as well. So I hope everybody's looking forward to that. Bye for now.